So Mike from Moto IQ here, and uh, this is going to be the first of a, I think, a semi-regular feature that we do every once in a while, and we're going to call it engine autopsy. So the reason why I think this is uh, good information to share is one of the things, if you blow up your engine, uh, you should always try to figure out why it blew up and figure out the root cause and correct that before you put your next engine in. Uh, many times as engine builders, we've had customers that blow up one engine after another, and it's because they've never gone to the bottom of what's causing their engine to blow up in the first place. So you should always tear down your blown up engine, see what the root cause of your problem was and correct it. So that way you save time and money. Now this engine is a uh, turbocharged V6. Um, it was really built well by us. Um, everything was pretty perfect, but it blew up right after it was broken in. And uh, one of the things is, um, you know, we're going to get down to see why. Now, when you look at this engine, you take it apart. Um, the first thing I guess you could see is, um, and I wish I could show you, is the spark plugs. Um, the spark plugs were uh, melted, the electrodes are gone and everything. Uh, the owner of the car took the spark plugs out and presumably threw them away, so I can't show you that, but I saw pictures. Now when you see plugs like this, you know, that's a sign of severe detonation, especially when the porcelain on the plug is broken. Uh, the hammering shockwaves of detonation breaks the porcelain of the plug, and little particles of hard ceramic flying around in your cylinders um, isn't too great. But uh, this engine has other signs of detonation too. Um, detonation usually um, starts around the exhaust valve side of the engine, and you can see it in these pistons. Uh, the discoloration on the, um, the domes are, uh, when you look at them, it's all on the exhaust side. Uh, that's because that tends to be the hotter side of the combustion chamber. Um, that's where detonation generally propagates on most motors. Uh, when you look really closely around the periphery of the piston on the exhaust side, you see a uh, sandy texture. You also see that on the cylinder head, uh, especially in between the exhaust valves here. Now the sandy texture is caused by um, aluminum actually uh, vaporizing and getting eroded from the extreme temperature shock waves of the detonation. Um, so that's something we look for. Um, when you look at the rod bearings, uh, you see that the top part of the rod bearing has a lot more wear than the bottom side. Um, this is because of the hammering force of detonation banging down and uh, actually wearing the tops of the um, bearings more than the bottoms. When you look at the head, like the sanding isn't too bad, so that's a sign of uh, intense gen uh, detonation over a short period of time. When you look at the block itself, uh, you can see that um, on some of the cylinders, the metal of the uh, cylinder lining is also has the sanded texture and some minor erosion, so that kind of screwed up the bore. Also, when you look at the head gasket, uh, you can see that the hammering pressure of detonation was also starting to cause the head gasket to fail because you can see where some of the pressure has been seeping out and is starting to go through the steam hole right here. Now, this was just really short uh, duration, so you're... Uh, Fortunately, it didn't really damage the uh, block or the head much. If this goes on for a long time, it could actually erode the gasket and the gasket could be gone in this area. And you can also entrench and uh, ruin the deck of the uh, block and the head. But uh, this was caught earlier. Maybe the engine stopped running. Uh, when you look at the piston itself on the uh, Cylinders that have the worst de detonation damage, um, the ring lands are bent down and the rings are stuck solid and they don't move. Uh, when the rings are stuck like this, 
uh, you lose compression in that cylinder and uh, those cylinders quit really contributing to the engine running very well and that was probably the first thing the owner of this engine noticed. Uh, also with the uh, ring stuck, the piston um, kind of gets wedged in the bore and it actually causes bore damage. So you can see some of the scoring of the bore that was caused by the locked in rings and the piston not being able to float. Also, uh, you know, some of the damage from the detonation also kind of like creep down the side and uh, like molten aluminum and stuff like that actually got into the rings, past the rings, and they really gouged up the skirts, as you can see here. And that also caused uh, damage. Now, what usually causes damage uh, like detonation is um, too much boost for the octane of fuel you're running, um, too much boost for the tune the car previously had. Like, let's say you know, you're tuned to run pump gas at 14 PSI or something, but you turn the boost up to 20 because, uh, you know, you have a built motor that's stronger and can take it. But let's say your engine wasn't tuned to go that high. Um, you know, you can get problems like this. Also, um, it could be not enough injector, uh, not enough uh, fuel pump. Uh, so it can't maintain the proper air fuel ratio. Too much advanced in your tune and too hot of a spark plug or maybe a combination of everything. Uh, it's one of the reasons why when you get a new motor, you should always have a reputable tuner check out and set your running parameters. Like um, your tuner can determine how much boost is safe for the amount of gas that... Uh, or for the amount of uh, octane your, your the fuel you plan to run has. Um, also, your tuner can tell if you're running out of pump or injector capacity. Um, you know, like, I think another cause of running too much boost is, um, especially if you just had your engine in and out, is maybe the wastegate lines weren't connected correctly. Um, and you have like leaks uh, in the lines going to your wastegate, which would cause you to run a higher than normal boost pressure. Um, these are all things that have to be considered. Um, the other thing is when you're running your engine, if you hear detonation, that's not normal. You gotta back off and see what's causing the detonation. Uh, some people are better than others at hearing it, like I can hear it really good myself, and I can even hear that rough combustion uh, precursor to detonation. But, um, you know, my partner, Martin, he can't hear it at all. And a lot of times we've been in the same car, and I've told him, told him stop, stop, it's detonating, and he couldn't hear it. And to me, it was super loud. So some people can hear it, other people can't. Um, to me, like if an engine's detonating bad enough to do this, it's, it probably sounds like someone's getting a hammer and hitting inside the engine. And, um, you know, you got to stop if you hear that. But, you know, being able to hear it or not, like um, it, if you go to your tuner and verify your tune and uh, check your air fuel ratio, check your boost pressure and uh, the heat range of your plugs, make sure you have good gas. Um, this kind of stuff won't happen. Um, now, uh, I, I think what might have happened is, um, you know, maybe too much boost was being run, or maybe the car had some bad gas from sitting while the engine was getting built. Not sure, but it was uh, classic detonation. Uh, this is one of the most common failures we have uh, see when we're fixing people's uh, engines that get blown up. Um, so we always warn them, you know, make sure you figure out what caused this detonation. Um, a lot of times tuners are at fault too. Uh, there's a lot of like, uh, especially street tuners and they only tune mostly street cars. And, you know, of course they're under a lot of pressure to make the most horsepower and to beat out their competitors. And then, um, you know, everybody wants a dyno sheet with a big power number to, uh, put on Instagram or to brag to your friends. But uh, this kind of thinking is very detrimental, especially if you're tuning on pump gas. 
Uh, pump gas tunes can be very tricky and very unforgiving. And it's better if you go to a tuner that has actual like uh, road racing experience and um, or, or, you know, like does pro drift cars or something and has a reputation for being reliable. Uh, you know, these kind of tuners aren't building the, uh, aren't making a one dyno run hero kind of pull. And they'll tune your car so you can like rip through the gears or do a track day and not uh, blow up. Um, you know, this might be 10 or even 20 horsepower down from a one-pole hero, but, um, you know, you know what's, what's your engine worth, right? So um, maybe you could do a one-pole hero tune to impress people, but then have a conservative one that you run. But, um, you know, like when stuff like this happens, it's unfortunate and uh, really, really... Um, when you have a new engine, you know, have your tune verified and, you know, like do an autopsy of your old engine to, uh, you know, see what happened and what caused it to blow up, fix those root causes, and you'll be a lot happier. Now, uh, this was a good example of detonation. Um, you know, like as we see it, if I get a classic example of another kind of failure, I'll do another video uh, on that kind of failure. And I hope you find this interesting. So if you like our content, be sure and subscribe. Uh, we have all kinds of tech content. Uh, you can go to MotoIQ.com. We have literally thousands of tech articles there. Uh, we could probably answer almost any of your questions if you use the old search function. We also have a web store, so you can get some cool merch and uh, get parts for your car. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, we'll see you next time.